Hello friends. Today, let us see the significance of poles and zeros in a transfer function. Now, for example, let us take a transfer function as z into 2z plus 1 divided by z plus 1 into z plus 2. Now this is a given transfer function in which I have numerators and I have a denominator. So zeros are the roots of numerator polynomial whereas poles are the roots of denominator polynomial. Okay, How to get roots? equate the numerator to 0. So when I equate the numerator to 0, I get z into 2z plus 1, which is equal to 0. So now this product can be going to 0 only if z is equal to 0 or 2z plus 1 goes to 0. That means z is equal to minus 1 by 2. Similar way, I do it for the denominator polynomial I get z plus 1 into z plus 2 equals to 0 then z plus 1 can be equal to 0 or z plus 2 can be equal to 0 that means z is equal to minus 1 or z is equal to minus 2. Let us take all the numbers and plot on a z plane. So my z plane have an x-axis which we called it as real part of z and we have a y-axis to which we called as imaginary part of z. So the imaginary part of z that is the y-axis is written as j. The denominator part is minus j. Okay. On the x-axis we have all real values and on the y-axis we have imaginary values. z domain always works with circles. So in a z domain, we will have all circles. There's a very important circle which we called as a unit circle whose radius is equal to 1. Okay. Now, before plotting and understanding the physical significance of poles and zeros, let us briefly look at how z plane looks like and what it is made up of. So the basic constituents of z plane is given as z is equal to r e raised to j theta. So it is a very familiar kind of a representation. We call this as a polar representation. This is a polar representation of a complex number. So z is a complex number. So where r denotes the radius or sometimes we also called it as an amplitude and theta is denoted as the angle or sometimes we refer to as a phase. So we have two entities or two variables in z. One is called as r and the second is theta. So let us make uh, some plots with the varying r and let us see how theta is reflected. So in general, if I wanted to draw, then let us select for r equals to 1 r equals to 2, r equals to 3, okay? Radius cannot be negative. Radius, if it equals to 0, that means it is a center or a point. So if we have radius equals to 0, then it will reflect a point. Whereas, it cannot go be below 0. So there is no question of r taking a value as minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 because radius of a circle cannot be negative. So now, my r, let us take a value as 1, 2 and 3. So for r equals to 1, my let us say that this is the circle. Then for r is equal to 2, let us say this is the circle. And for r is equal to 3, let us say this is my circle. So the blue curve shows that there is a radius r of r equals to 3. 
red curve shows that the radius is r is equal to 2 and finally the black curve shows a radius at r equals to 1. So we have three circles one with r is equal to 1, red with r is equal to 2 and third is r is equal to 3 that is a blue curve. Now where is theta? This is about r. Where is theta? Theta is the angle made with respect to the x axis that we can say as real part of a z. So this is my theta. So with respect to black, this is my theta. With respect to blue, this is my theta. And with respect to red, this is my theta. Okay. So we have r equals to 1 and we have certain theta. Let us say I have a point, I have a point P. So we have a point P which is equal to uh, 2 e raised to j pi. Okay. So let us say that we have a point 2 e raised to j pi. Now we know that here theta is equal to pi and r is equal to 2. So now on r is equal to 2 circle that is a red circle I have to rotate or I have to move on and then at a theta is equal to pi I have to stop and that is my point. So if I go all the way from x axis to pi then that means this is the point where I have the value or that is my z point. So this is my z equals to 2 e raised to j pi. Okay. Let us take another point p as 1 e raised to uh, minus j pi by 2. Okay. So we can have plus angles and we can have minus angles. Let us stick to plus angles and avoid confusion. So let us take this as plus j pi by 2. We might have negative angles. For negative angles, we have to go down from the x-axis and we have to count the reverse way as from the previous thing. So we are moving uh, anti-clockwise for positive angles and we will be moving anti-clockwise when we will be considering negative angles. Okay. So uh, the point 1 e raised to plus j pi by 2 will be 1 that means I have to move on black curve and uh, uh, e raised to j pi by 2 I will start from here and come to e raised to j pi by 2 which is this point. So this is my z equals to 1 e raised to j pi by 2. Okay. Similarly, if suppose I have a point P which is 1.5 e raised to j pi by 4. That means now it is not on black curve, it is not on red curve because if I move on black curve then that point will go as r is equal to 1. If I move on red curve that point will go as a, a r is equal to 2 but my r is somewhere in between 1.5. So that curve or that circle will be in between 1 and 2 which I make using a dotted line. So this is new r. So of this circle now we have r going as 1.5 and my theta is pi by 4. So I should not come till this point because this is pi by 2, this is my pi, this is 2 pi by 3 and this will be 2 pi. right? So I will come, this is 2 pi by 2 sorry. Now I will come on uh, from here to here it is pi by 2 so I have to stop somewhere in between. So let us assume some direction and take a point over here. So this is the point z equals to 1.5 e raised to j pi by 4. Okay. So this is the way we need to represent a point on z plane. So we might have a complex number, we might have a real number. If we have a real number that will all fall on x axis 
if we have all imaginary numbers they will fall on y axis and the numbers which are complex like real part and imaginary part they will fall in between anywhere in the z plane but always remember there will be a radius associated to the point and a phase or angle associated with it an angle will always be measured with respect to x axis and not with respect to y axis this is how we represent a point on a z plane now let us continue and uh, see the previous problem or the example of a problem was z equals to 0 we had a point and we had one more point at z equals to 1 by 2 this was our zeros and our poles was on uh, z equals to minus 1 and z equals to minus 2. Now, if I wanted to plot this I want a circle with radius 0 because if I compare this for with r e raised to j theta then this will be radius is 0 that means I will have a simple point it is a 0 so I will draw it using a circle. So, this is z is equal to 0 point that is the origin my x as axis is the real part of z and y axis is the imaginary part of z. Now, the next point is minus 1 by 2 it is a real value. So, if it is a real value then it will fall on x axis and then when it will be on x axis uh, it will be minus that means it will go on this side because this is a negative axis then it will come as minus 1 by 2 which is minus 0 0.5 which is far inside the one unit circle. Now, there is a circle which passes through this 0 0.5 which is minus 0 0.5. So, that is what I am drawing using this dotted line. So, there is a circle and on that circle I have moved uh, about pi in the angle and that I got as minus 1 by 2. Now, the poles oh I am sorry the value will go as a circle. Now, the poles are at minus 1 and minus 2. So, minus 1 is more negative as compared to minus 1 by 2. So, it will come somewhere around here minus 1 and now it is a pole. So, I have to draw a cross mark and there is a circle passing through this point with the radius of r equals to 1. There is a circle this has radius r equals to 0.5. Now, this minus is not for radius, this minus is with respect to the angle. I got the angle as e raised to minus j pi, ok. So, that will give me minus 1 because if I write e raised to minus j pi, that can be written as cos pi minus j sin pi, sorry, we have plus, so plus cos pi plus j sin pi. Now, cos pi is minus 1. J, j sin pi is 0. So, that will give me minus 1. So, this 1 by minus 1 by 2 you can write as ok. The same thing I can represent it as 1 by 2 e raised to j pi ok. It is 1 and the same. This minus is with respect to phase and not with respect to radius because we have seen previously that radius cannot be negative of a circle. So, this minus is for the phase and not for the radius, radius is always non-negative number ok. Now, this is r equals to 1. Now, the third value is as minus 2. So, I have further negative value as minus 2 and this is the circle which will pass through minus 2. So, this is at r is equal to 2. So, I am purposefully not writing r is equal to minus 2, I am writing it as r is equal to 2 because r cannot take a negative value. Now, how does this poles and zeros risk? really affects my h of z and why should I calculate the poles and zeros of a system. Now, zeros makes the h of z to go to 0 whereas poles makes the system h of z to go to infinity. Now, my h of z that is a system transfer function is nothing but output upon input. If I rewrite this equation, I will get x of z into h of z equals to y of z that means output equals to 
the transfer function into the input. So, this is my output, this is my input and this is my transfer function. So, if the transfer functions go 0, I have any input multiplied by such 0 transfer function give me output as 0. If I have infinite transfer function, then input multiplied by that infinite value will give me a infinite output. Okay. So, if I wanted that certain inputs to be blocked at the output side, then I can make my h of z to go to 0. And if I want that certain inputs to get highest amplitude or highest system response, then I will keep my h of z to go to infinity. That means, whenever I wanted to reject some input, then I will, in, then I will put a 0. And whenever I wanted to pass an input, then I will put a poles. So, poles are, rep are the representatives for passing certain values, whereas zeros are the representers of rejecting a values. So, poles passes the input, whereas zeros reject the input. So, if I wanted to reject certain inputs, I will have zeros and if I wanted to pass certain inputs, then I will have poles. Now, pole and zeros might be real or might be complex. That means, poles depends on radius as well as on uh, the angle, poles and zeros both. In a system transfer function, the angle or the phase that is z is equal to r e raised to j omega is been written where omega is the angular frequency. So, what I did? I replaced my theta with respect to angular frequency which is omega. Okay? Now, this omega is called as digital angular frequency okay? and the unit is radians. Please remember the unit of digital angular frequency is radians and not radians per second. So, whenever you write a unit for omega, it will always be radians. So, what will be the basic limit on omega? If I have this r equals to 1, then z becomes equals to e raised to j omega. What are the maximum values that omega can take? The minimum value that omega can take is the 0. That means, the point is on the x axis and the maximum value of the omega can be pi. So, the limits on omega is 0 to pi, 2 pi that means it will go to 0 that is on x axis and complete one circle will be 2 pi. So, it is going from 0 to 2 pi or I can write it half the way I can go from year to year it is pi. And if I go in this direction, that is clockwise, it becomes minus pi. Okay? So, I will have either 0 to 2 pi or same I can write it as minus pi to pi. So, the limits on omega here is 0 to 2 pi and minus pi to pi. Okay? So, when I say omega, omega is an angular frequency. Limits on omega is 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. It is measured in radians. So, when I say a 0, at a, a certain point, for example, z equals to 1 e raised to minus j pi by 2, if I draw that point on z plane, let us say that it is, uh, this becomes uh, plus j with pi by 2, this is my pi this is I write minus j pi by 2 and there is 0. So, now I am putting my constraint on plus pi and minus pi. If you write it with respect to um, 0 to 2 pi, then it will be all pluses. There is no minus angle in that case. Okay. Now, uh, 1 e raised to minus j pi by 2, this radius is 1 and I have my 0 point at this value. So, this is my 0. 
okay now let us say that i have a pole at z p that is p stands for pole at uh, 1 e raised to 0 so i have a pole at omega is equal to 0 which will be over here so this is my pole and let us arbitrarily i choose a pole at some distinct value let us say this to be my omega 1 this is my omega 1 with the minus sign and i have a zeros which is at minus omega 2 and omega 2 so then omega equals to pi by 2 have 0 so it will get rejected that means the frequency pi by 2 will get rejected now omega equals to 0 have a pole at this frequency so it will get passed through so my pi by 2 that is 90 degrees frequency pi by 2 frequency will get rejected whereas zero frequency will be passed similarly if i see omega 1 and minus omega 1 over there also we have two poles then that two frequencies will also get passed whereas omega 2 and omega minus omega 2 will be rejected because it also have a 0 at that position. So, whenever I wanted to reject a frequency, I will put a 0 and whenever I wanted to pass a frequency, then I will put a pole. So, in this way, a transfer function affects the frequency component of a given uh, input. So, whenever I wanted to reject an input frequency, I will put a 0 and whenever I wanted to pass a given frequency, that time I will put a pole. So, that is how we use the poles and zeros to either reject a frequency or to a pass a frequency. Thank you.